Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Adam Elwan, your host, and we are excited to introduce you to the new classification and labeling, or CNL inventory. It has now been added to our chemicals database, ECACHEM. The inventory offers data on over 4,400 EU harmonized classifications, as well as 7 million classifications that have either been notified or included in REACH registrations. It also has around 350,000 substances, making it essential for anyone dealing with chemical substances. So, what can you expect today? We'll be showing you the new inventory and giving you some insights into how the data is displayed. We'll also be explaining the drivers behind the redesign, for example, our focus on clean and well-structured information to improve transparency and clarity. Today is also a chance for you to get answers to your questions on these new features, but also how they can benefit your work. You can send your questions throughout the event by going to slido.com and using the event code CL2025 or by scanning the QR code on this slide. Now we have all the speakers and other experts here with me today and they are ready to reply to your questions. So do make use of this opportunity. That said, we can only cover questions within the scope of the webinar. Any other questions you can send using our contact form at eka.europa.eu forward slash contact. A Q&A with answers to all the questions will also be published after the event. So if your question is not answered by the time we close, you'll find it in the published Q&A. We also have a short feedback form and I do encourage you to fill it in so we can better meet your needs in our future events. We've published the presentations already on our website and the video recording will be available right after the event. So here is our program for today with presentations from our experts that have been working hands-on on, on ECACHEM. After this introduction, Owen will present the new classification labeling inventory. And after him, Marco will go a bit deeper into harmonized classifications, explaining their importance and how they're determined. After Marco, Anna will jump in and talk about industry self-classifications, explaining how companies classify their substances and the implications of these classifications. Owen will then present improvements and new functionalities that have been introduced into ECACHEM. I'll then wrap up the webinar with a few take-home messages. You can send us questions until 12 Helsinki time, and we'll keep replying until then. Okay, time to hand over to Owen to give you a tour of the redesigned CNL inventory inside ECACHEM. Owen, over to you. Uh, the redesigned CNL inventory in ECACHEM. So, as you may know, ECA is moving data from our existing dissemination platform to ECACHEM. Uh, we're working on an incremental development to ensure stability and continuity of the published data. And the integration of the CNL inventory is the second phase. There has been stakeholder involvement throughout the development process and we will continue to look for user feedback after each release to ensure uh, user satisfaction and to steer the direction for new functionalities to come. Uh, ECACAM went live in January 2024, and now on the 20th of May 2025, we are releasing the second major dataset, the redesigned CNL inventory. Later this year in September, we will release the first set of regulatory lists and obligations as well as having later on in the year enhancements to all published data streams. The, there were a number of design principles used for developing the new CNL inventory. The key aim was to provide the information in an understandable, useful and easy to use manner. And uh, the key focus is to show the alignment of the industry data that has been submitted to ECHA. Uh, every published classification is also clearly uh, stamped with its origin, the details of where it comes from, the details of the substance identity and variance for the substance provided by industry, and other necessary information to ensure users can understand the CNL that they are looking at. As I mentioned, there has been continual stakeholder involvement to tweak the display and the data shown. And the first version contains uh, harmonized classifications from CLP Annex 6 and industry submitted classifications distinct per substance. 
Uh, to access the CLN information, you begin from the ECACHEM homepage, where you have the search for substances. You can enter any substance identifier of any kind and search to get the meaningful results where available. And then once you have selected a substance of interest, you will see the substance dashboard. On the dashboard, the key information ECA holds will be shown, the substance identity with the details of the substance name, EC, CAS, structure if available and so on. Uh, in the details of that, you have all public identifiers for the substance. If the substance has been registered under REACH, you will see the REACH dossiers that ECHO holds for the substance. And finally, with the integration of the CNL inventory, you will see the a widget showing the prominent classification for the substance, the best available classification. Uh, you'll also see an overview of how many harmonized classifications and how many distinct industry self-classifications has been provided for this substance. And by clicking on the elements here, you can navigate to view in detail what you want. Uh, I now hand over to my colleague Marco, who will go through the details of how the harmonized classification will be included in the inventory. Thank you. Thank you, Owen. Hello, <clears throat> my name is Marco Mattiuzzo, and I work in the Hazard Classification Unit that supports the implementation of the CLP regulation, including the CNL inventory. In this slide, we continue looking at the substance overview page we just reached with the search. The new CNL block allows you to quickly view the number of harmonized and industry classifications available for a substance in the inventory. Harmonized classification means that the classification is agreed upon at the EU level and must be followed. Industry classification refers to the classifications industry submits to ECA under the REACH and CLP regulations, following the CLP criteria when harmonized classifications for other substances are unavailable. If there is a harmonized classification, this is shown in the block, together with the relevant ATP number and the Annex 6 name. ATP stands for Adaptation to Technical Progress. It is a legal document that updates the CLP regulation and keeps the regulation current by making changes such as adding, replacing, or removing entries in Table 3 of Annex 6. To find more detailed information on harmonized classification, you can either use the left side menu or click on the harmonized classifications in the block. This page covers the CLP harmonized classification of the substance. At the top, there is a tab that displays the upcoming ATPs for the substance. For example, in this case, the current ATP is in force until August 2025, after which a new ATP becomes relevant. Whether this upcoming ATP has any changes for this substance can be seen by switching the tab from In Application to Future. You also have a link to the related legal text on the right side. Scrolling down the ATP information, the CLP harmonized classification of the substance can be seen. Further down the page, additional classification elements such as specific concentration limits, M factors, and acute toxicity estimates are provided, if relevant and available. In certain cases, a substance may have multiple harmonized classification for example, due to variations in the form of the substance. In this case, you will see several classifications that are marked in application. An example of such a substance is lead. Lead has a harmonized classification for the massive form with a particle diameter above one millimeter and another one for the powder form with particles measuring less than one millimeter in diameter. That concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention 
and now I hand over to Hanna. Thank you, Marco. Hello, my name is Anna Daszyńska and I work in the team developing our chemicals database ECACHEM. I am responsible for the classification and labeling inventory. I will focus on industry classifications and explain the concepts behind the new way of displaying CNL information from rich registrations and CLP notifications. To start, let's take another look at the Substance Overview page where we see how many classifications are available. We see that for our example substance, there are five industry classifications. Let's take a closer look at this information. When accessing industry classifications, we land on the details page where all available industry classifications for substance are displayed. These classifications are grouped in distinct classifications and listed. To see details related to each classification, you can select an entry from this drop-down list. The aim of this grouping is to bring clarity and transparency on available classifications and to indicate how frequently the same classification has been used for the substance. The last update date gives an indication when the last submission with this classification has been made. Each separate classification from the drop-down list corresponds to a distinct classification. These classifications are ranked according to their source, so rich registrations or CLP notifications, the status, which could be active or inactive, and the last update date. The percentage indicates the percentage of total industry notification for that classification, making the classification with the highest number of notifiers the most visible. In case of more than one classification per substance, as you see on this slide, the sorting of these classifications is based on classification alignment. So how widely this classification is used, highest rank source, that is rich joint submission, the highest rank status, that is active, and the last update date. When clicking on the icons, you will see information on the affected organs and routes of exposure. Above the classification table, you can see if the submitted classification elements align with CLP Annex 1, ensuring consistency between the hazard category and statement. Based on this alignment, the derived labeling as foreseen by CLP articles is displayed. Additional classification details including variants, specific concentration limits, and then factors are presented as percentages to show the proportion of submissions containing this information. This concludes this presentation. In the next part, I will talk about the future developments for the CNL inventory. The CNL inventory that we launched last week is a first release. We will gradually develop and add more features to it. Some examples of upcoming features are expanding CLP Annex 6 entries that are groups into separate substances, improving the user interface, a hazard summary that gives an overview of all hazards identified for the substance and relative frequency of classifications, making available combined classifications easy to find CNL for substances with both harmonize and self-classifications, computer-readable data formats, as well as adapting to changes from CLP revision that enter into force in 2026, such as publication of reason for differing classification per hazard class and publication of notifier names where this information is not flagged confidential. This concludes my part of the presentation. Thank you for your attention. 
Now I will hand over back to Adam. All right, that concludes our presentations. Thank you very much to our presenters. So to conclude, first of all, we hope you got a good introduction to the new classification and labeling inventory inside ECACAM. As mentioned at the start, it's packed with information on over 4,400 EU-level harmonized classifications and 7 million classifications that are part of REACH registration dossiers. We've made some major improvements to the data display and user experience. The new design is all about making sure that you can easily find and understand the information you need. We've also aligned the classifications so you can now see better how they relate to each other. We've made the inventory as transparent and as accessible as possible. You can now see where the classifications come from so you can understand why they're important. In the future, we're planning to make it even easier to access and use the data. We'll also be making it easier to integrate the data into other systems. The feedback from our users and partners has been key to making sure that the new inventory meets their needs. We'll keep gathering this feedback and making improvements as we go. Now, if you'd like to join us in future focus groups, interviews, and similar opportunities, you can fill in our form using the QR code on this slide. We'll reach out to you if a relevant opportunity arises. As mentioned at the start, you can find the presentations already on our website, and the video recording can be watched right after the event. A Q&A with answers to all the questions is also coming soon. And the easiest way to find out when it's available is to subscribe to our weekly news at eka.europa.eu forward slash subscribe. So it's time to end the webinar. Thank you all for joining today. We hope you found it useful. And I do encourage you to now go and explore the new CNL inventory. Goodbye from Helsinki. <laughs>